Hello everyone, welcome to this EPSIM online webinar. My name is Enli Wang. I'm a chief research scientist in CSIRO. I'm also a member of the EPSIM reference panel. In this short webinar, I'm going to talk about modeling soil carbon and nitrogen using EPSIM with a major focus on soil carbon. I will firstly show a few slides on how EPSIM works and then an example simulation. In recent years, there is an increasing interest to model soil organic carbon because soil organic carbon is part of soil organic matter. Soil organic matter contains both carbon and nutrients and is an indicator of soil fertility and crop productivity. In addition, soil carbon is the largest carbon pool in terrestrial systems. Land use, like cropping with different management practices, can lead to loss of soil carbon to the atmosphere as CO2 emission or accumulation of soil carbon contributing to carbon sequestration in the soil. Now let's look at EPSIM and how EPSIM simulates soil organic matter dynamics. EPSIM has four soil organic matter pools. The first one is FOM for fresh organic matter in soil, such as root residue and any plant residue that is incorporated into soil. The second one is the inert pool, referring to the fraction of soil organic matter that is inert and does not decompose. The third one is the balm pool for soil microbial biomass and microbial products. The last one is the HUM pool, that is the humic pool containing the rest of soil organic matter. Each of the pools has its own C to N ratio and a potential decomposition rate constant. Decomposition is simulated in EPSIM as a first order decay process. Decomposition of soil organic matter pools will cause carbon and nitrogen flow between them. When a pool decomposes, 60% of decomposed carbon will be lost to the atmosphere as CO2 while 40% will be transferred to other pools. The nitrogen flow between pools is controlled by the c 2 ratio of the receiving pool. The decomposition process also leads to mineralization or immobilization of soil nutrients, such as nitrogen. The released nitrogen from decomposition in the form of NH4 can further go through the processes of nitrification and denitrification and is made available for crop uptake and leaching. All the SOM pools need to be initialized before running a simulation. The initial carbon and nitrogen amount of FOM is normally estimated using root biomass from previous season and root c 2 ratio. FOM in EPSIM is further separated into three sub-pools that's a lignin-like, a cellulose-like, and a carbohydrate-like sub-pool with increasingly faster decomposition rate. The initial sizes of the inert BALM and HUM pools are estimated using the soil organic carbon percentage, soil c 2 n ratio for HUM and inert pools, and soil microbial c 2 n ratio for the BALM pool. Firstly, for the inert pool, the carbon content is calculated using F inert, which is the inert fraction of organic carbon. For the bottom pool, its carbon content is estimated using the F bulb, which is the microbial biomass fraction of the non-inert carbon. 
after the inert and the bound pores are initialized, the remaining carbon is put into HUM pool. For F inert and F bound, there is an online document available prepared by Neil Daglish and other CSRO colleagues. A section in this document describes how to estimate F inert and F bound. Basically, F inert can be affected by soil type and management. Normally, we can assume that all carbon below 60 cm in soil is inert, and the surface layers have a similar amount of inert carbon. This enables estimation of F inert with soil carbon and measurements in different soil layers. For F bound, it is affected by fresh carbon input, so it is higher in surface layers and lower in deeper soil layers. The two tables show some indicative values for F inert and F bound for typical soils in Australia. They are from the document on the right. Once the SOM pores are established, EPSIM simulates their decomposition as first order decay using rate constants. Each SOM pore has a maximum rate constant, as listed in this table, with the quickest pore on the top and slowest pore at the bottom. The inert pore was also put there as well, but with a rate constant of zero. In the simulation, the actual rate constant is simulated as the maximum one modified by a temperature and soil water factor for balm and humid pores, and an additional soil CN ratio factor for the three FOM sub pores. The actual rate of decomposition is the rate constant multiplied with the size of each pore. The graphs on the right show the responses of decomposition rate to soil temperature on the top, soil water in the middle, and soil CN ratio at the bottom. A further point of attention is the decomposition of the surface organic matter in EPSIM. This is handled by the surface OM component. Surface OM can manage a mixture of different types of plant residues or manures. Each can have its own mass, nutrient contents in organic and mineral forms, specific area, and decomposition rate constant. When a crop is ended after harvest, its above ground residue becomes surface organic matter, and the root residue becomes fresh organic matter in the soil. Different tillage options can be used to remove a fraction of surface organic matter or incorporate it into soil to become FOM. Decomposition of surface organic matter forms new balm and new HUM. Release CO2 and also releases or fixes mineral nutrients such as nitrogen and phosphorus. I don't want to go into details of surface OM, but two key points to remember here. Firstly, surface OM impacts on both soil carbon and nitrogen. And secondly, surface organic matter covers soil surface can impact on evaporation and soil water balance. Okay, to summarize, EPSIM simulates soil organic matter decomposition as first order decay process. The SOM pores are initialized with percentage soil organic carbon, soil C to N ratio, and root residue. After harvest, crop roots becomes fresh organic matter in soil, shoot residue becomes surface organic matter. Tillage can remove surface organic matter or incorporate it into soil to become fresh organic matter. Anything that affects crop growth such as nitrogen application, rainfall, will impact on the residue amount returned into soil and eventually affecting soil organic carbon change.